In this creative video, I'm going to show you how to add a blur to the background of your photos using nothing more than Adobe Lightroom. Traditionally, you might expect to open your photos up in Photoshop for this, but there's actually a tool right here in Lightroom that's going to allow you to do the same. Go over to the develop panel here and underneath the histogram, you're going to see a row of tools. We have crop, heal and clone, red eye, graduated filter, radial filter and brush. The brush is what we're going to be using for this video. So select the adjustment brush or you can press K and that adjustment brush tool will open up. What we need to do is we need to apply a mask to this background. And as I select this image here, you can see a red area is showing up on this photograph. That means that any adjustments I make over here is going to affect the area that is red. So I can increase the exposure, the highlights, the contrast, all of that is going to happen to that red section there. If you don't want to see this, and I recommend keeping this on when you draw your mask, you can simply press O on your keyboard and it's going to turn it off or on. It's O for overlay. And you can also see down here, show selected mask overlay. For the purposes of this video, we're going to keep it on. Now it's time to brush on this mask to the background. To do this, we're going to go down to this section here where you see brush. We have A selected because you can have a couple of different brushes to work from. And I'm going to click on this arrow to open up this drop down. And you see we have size, feather, flow, auto mask and density. The size is pretty obvious and I can also scroll up to make it bigger or down to make it smaller. The feather is the difference between, if I open this up, you'll see it better the difference between the outer circle and the inner circle. So if I set that feather to zero, you can see that those two become pretty much exactly the same. Whereas if I put it all the way to 100, you can see there is a big difference between that outer circle and the inner circle. As I apply this mask to the photo here, you'll see that the center of the photo is getting all of the adjustments and the outer ring is getting just a slight adjustment fading off to the edge. So that is the feather tool. It's pretty useful, but for the most part, if we use a tool down here called auto mask, you don't need to worry too much about it. And I don't tend to have too wide of a feather. We'll come back to that in a moment. I'm just gonna reset these changes now. And I'm gonna go back and let's select a feather of around 10. I'll use 10 for this and I'm just going to select this background again so I can show you something else. The flow here allows you to choose how much of the mask is being applied to the photograph. So imagine you've got a hose pipe and you've got it on at half power. Some water will flow out but not as much as if you turn it on to 100 where all of the water is going to be flowing out at once. So you can see here if I select I just select this scene here, you can see not much is happening until I click a few times onto the image. But if I change this flow to 100 and I select part of this scene, you can see that is 100 flow right away on this image. Because I'm just trying to do a creative blur on the background, I don't need to worry about flow. I'm trying to affect the whole background of the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my flow on 100, the feather at about 10 and I'll adjust the size as I go. Let's reset those again now. And there's one more thing I want to show you, and that's auto mask. So if I turn on auto mask, Lightroom is basically going to work out the area that I'm trying to process in my scene. And it's not going to process anything that doesn't quite match it. So you see, I'm going over this boy's head here. And until I go really far over, it doesn't apply that processing to the image. You also need to be careful it doesn't do that to the background as well. But with a little bit of stroking over the scene, you can quickly solve that too. So that's pretty good. Um, I have gone over this boy's head here. So what am I going to do? Well, to solve that, I'm going to go to the erase tool over here and I'll just erase that from the boy's head. So now we're just affecting the background. So using what I've just shown you, I'm going to go back through and I'm going to apply this brush across the whole image. But there's one more thing to show you and that's density down here. So previously I had it set to 100. I can draw on the photo like so. But if I change this over here to let's say 12, it's going to change 
that whole area that I've applied. It's basically correcting that brush. So it's not like when we have a uh, flow, for example, where I might have you know, 50 over here and then 100 over here, and then I bring it back down to six and go over the top. That's not changing, it's not undoing anything. But the density is doing exactly that. It allows me to apply an adjustment to part of the photograph here, and then I can go over it and I say, actually, you know, I want to bring the density of this whole image down. Everything that's already been done, I'm going to adjust the adjustment and I'm going to bring the density down to, let's say, uh, 28 here. Density is not something I tend to make any use of. So I'm going to select that to 100. And it basically takes it out of commission entirely and allows me to just use these ones up here. So with that in mind, I'm now going to go over the whole photograph. And once we're done with that, I'm going to then make the background nice and blurry. Okay. Now that I've applied the mask, you can see I've been really sloppy on the sky because the sky is white and grainy. I don't need to worry about blurring that at all. Now that I've applied this, I'm actually going to turn the mask overlay off like so. And then as I make the adjustments over here to clarity, and I bring this down, you'll see that the background has been affected by a blur and I don't have to try and see through this red overlay. So like that, I'm able to very easily blur the background of my photograph. So that's on and that's off, on and off. You can also do this twice. You can take another brush and go over the top again and make it even more blurred. Or you can experiment with some of the different options here. So dehaze here, if I push this to the right, it's gonna dehaze the background, but to the left, you'll start to see that I'm adding haze, which you might want to do, but I think it looks a little bit ridiculous in this background. Haze is very different to clarity. You know, you want to be able to see the background detail still. It just needs to be more blurry, which is why I use clarity. So I'm only gonna apply clarity here. That's how I blur the background in Adobe Lightroom Classic CC. Now let's have a look at the same thing inside Adobe Lightroom CC. So same thing again here, only we're going to use the brush tool, which is on the right hand side down here. And we can do the same thing over here, but you'll notice you actually want to open this box up. This won't be open by default to be able to see any of these details. So I'm going to push the feather to, let's say, 100 for now, put the flow to 100. You'll see it looks the same. I can bring the feather down. It's basically exactly the same thing. We have density, we have auto mask. Everything's the same. One slight difference here is the O button will now show you hide overlays show the overlay tool so you can see where it's being affected and I can go and select that, show mask overlay. So now the tool isn't there, but I can see where the mask is being applied. And again, it's gonna show me both the tool and the mask overlay. So slight difference there, but it's the same approach. You can do exactly the same thing. Let's bring that clarity down and we'll turn that off. And now you can see that that area of that building behind is blurred. That's how we blur the background of a photo inside Lightroom. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment.